Let's go I'm sharing my time with Minister of Varadkar and Minister O'Dowd. Uh, and I first move the amendment in the name of the Taoiseach and the Thánaiste. It's usual, um, Laskan Corla, when a table of confidence is moved in this House that there is some expectation that it might be successful. This is not such an occasion. The motion before the House tonight amounts to little more than political posturing by the Sinn Féin party. Sinn Féin is a party that complains about political decisions but has shown little or no capacity to make any decisions itself. Their policies are the stuff of fantasy. We can show you their policy document when they said that they wouldn't accept a cent of EU or IMF funding. But of course, when it comes to decision making, the Minister, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes to decision making, Minister, when it comes, Minister, without interruption, we don't use vulgarity in this house normally. When it comes, you don't know vulgarity. I know, I know. You have no standards at all. When it comes, when it comes to making decisions, when it comes to making decisions, Karen Corla, they won't make them. At least in this part of the island, they do, of course, make decisions in Northern Ireland, but don't like to be reminded of them down here. In Sinn Féin's land, it's always someone else's fault. This government is in office a mere 18 months. It inherited an economy in an EU IMF programme. Even in the awful days of the 1980s, we avoided that. An economy unable to sustain itself. An economy that until that programme was agreed would have run out of money to pay the wages of teachers and guards. An economy that would not have been able to pay any child benefit to any of its citizens or any pension to its elderly. All of this largely as a result of a, a decision taken by the Fianna Fáil party when last in government and supported by the sponsors of this motion tonight to socialise private banking debt and place it upon the backs of the Irish people. Sinn Féin of a brass neck moving this motion this evening. After 18 months, this government's stewardship will change this country. The economy is on the road to recovery. Economic growth returned last year, and the economy is set to grow again this year. Every programme target that we set has been met. Our deficit is coming down. This year's target of 8.6% of GDP will be met. Our tax reven revenues are growing again. Our public sector is being modernised and industrial peace has been maintained. Our international reputation has been rescued. Our bond spreads have come down and we've secured independent funding in the markets for the first time in four years. We've introduced a jobs initiative and an action plan alongside a stimulus plan to invest in vital infrastructure and jobs. The last CSO quarterly household survey shows unemployment coming down for the first time in many years. This recovery is underway precisely because the government has taken difficult decisions. Nobody on this side of the House takes any pleasure in what has happened to our country or in the decisions that we've had to take since coming into office to begin the process of rebuilding and recovery. As I said in my budget speech last week, the Irish people have endured a fiscal correction without precedent in modern Western economy. The Irish people have done so with an amount of dignity and courage. Most independent commentators agree that the burden has been shared progressively across the social spectrum. Not every decision made by government has been perfect, it never could be and never will be. The Irish state has responded to the crisis. In a recession, more is asked of, of the state and public services, not less. As a people, we've tried to ensure that the least well-off are protected as much as possible. I say protected. Nobody has been immune. The scale of the crisis has ensured that. But the Irish people know 
that we need to get out of this programme. They realise that failure to do so would not only delay restoring our economic sovereignty, but would see further financial correction imposed upon us from outside this state, with little or no freedom of any Irish government to resist it. We only have to look elsewhere in Europe to know that that is an inescapable fact. The Irish people realise too that the future of Europe is being dis when the future of Europe is being discussed, Ireland needs to, to participate in those discussions without the constraints of being a programme member dependent on others. They know too that we are making progress, slow and painful progress, but they know that this crisis has brought down an awful burden on the young people of our country and have no intention of allowing that agony to be prolonged. They expect, and rightly so, some generosity from our European Union countries' neighbours, who <coughs> has paid the greatest price for the stability of the European banking sector, and that's the young population of this state. While the solidarity that we have received thus far is welcome, it falls short of what we need and what we deserve. We know that Ireland bears its share of responsibility for the mess we find ourselves in. Our people are paying a heavy price for these failures. But they know too that systemic European weaknesses played their part in our banking and property bubbles. This government expects our European partners to acknowledge this. The Irish people know too that we have other problems to tackle, that the fiscal crisis is only the first of the hurdles that we have to overcome, Laskian Corla. Our unemployment problem remains, and today's ESRI report reveals a particular problem where non-working households that goes beyond the fiscal crisis and requires a very measured and considered response. They know too that the fiscal crisis has called legacy issues that will take us years uh, to address. They know what has happened in Ireland is both tragic and complex. It is trivialised by the motion before this House tonight. No change in government will change the problems that we as a nation must address. Or Sinn Féin or Fianna Fáil, even together, offering such a solution to the Irish people. Even after last week's budget and the difficult decisions that were made, we will borrow €1 billion Euro plus a month next year to pay our bills. Two minutes remain. Sinn Féin's response is denial. Let's ignore the problem and hope it'll go away. Tell the EU IMF, as they did in their pre-budget submission or in their uh, pre-election submission, to take a hike. We'll mind our, our own business. This is a national government committed to restoring our country's fortune. Two, two parties of different ideological perspectives Minister, have come together. Don't interrupt. No they, interruption, please. That party, Lascaux Corner, I think they, they own the word nation as well as they own our flag. They own neither. This, two parties of different ideological perspectives have come together to pursue a single shared aim. Deputies on this side of the House that support this government do so not because it's easy. It's not easy. They do so because they know that the long-term interest of the Irish people requires decisions to be taken because this country does not enjoy the resources that it once had. They do so because they know that the national interest is more important than their own careers or the advance of their party. They do so because they recognise the world that faces us as it is, not as others would pretend it to be. They are putting their shoulders to the wheel, not hurling abuse from the ditch. None of that, Laskan Kohler, can be said about tonight's motion or the party that's moving it.